we've been talking a lot about uh, the bugs and eating the bugs and the weird food agendas they have. Bad news for those of you in the military. I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. All of you in the military, I know you've been slammed by these mandatory vaccinations and uh, you know wokeness and all this other stuff. Now, I, I'm really apologizing, especially those in the Navy, because they're going to start feeding you bugs. I, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm serious. If you're in the Navy, they're going to be rolling out programs to start feeding you alternative proteins. Uh, meat replacements. So if you if you enjoy like, um, you know, your your Bill Gates burgers, these ones that are, have so much estrogen, you might grow man boobs. Uh, or if you just enjoy eating grasshopper meat or, you know, millworm paste, uh, the military is the place for you because the Navy right now is actually rolling out this new program under the defense. Uh, they, have, they actually have it in the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act. They're giving funding for these new programs. And this is Twitter, Representative Marjorie Green, uh, Taylor Green saying this, She's on Twitter saying this. Now, I'll show you the document, too. She's saying funding in the NDAA, that's the funding for the, uh, you know, for the Defense in America, the National Defense Authorization Act. The funding provides a pilot program to feed fake meat to the Navy, as if recruitment isn't hard enough right now, getting young people to join our woke military require, requiring vaccines. The Navy is going to have it extra hard because apparently Bill Gates is designing the menu. Uh, what are they saying? Uh, section 222, it says pilot program on research and development of plant-based protein for the Navy. And it says not later than March 1st, 2023, the Secretary of the Navy shall establish and carry out a pilot program to offer plant-based protein options. Optional. Great, right? But it continues stating this, plant-based protein options. The term plant-based protein options means non uh, means edible vegan or vegetarian meat alternative products made using plant and other non-livestock based proteins now if it's not a plant what is the other thing that could be a uh, non-livestock based protein huh? Let's go into it, right? Non-livestock-based proteins, eh? What, what, what could that refer to? Well, is that about bugs? I think that's what everyone's asking right now. There's actually a battle, interestingly, going on around what defines meat. Because the people pushing for bug meat and people pushing for plant meat, quote-unquote, are running into two problems. One, you can't, in Texas, right, if you call it a steak, it's a, it means it's from a cow and it's a steak. You can't have like a bug steak. You can't have like a like a broccoli steak. You can't call it a steak. You can't trick people into thinking they're eating what they are used to eating, like chicken or cow or fish, when in reality you're feeding them bug paste or like plant protein or whatever they want to call it. You can't do that. They're unhappy about that though, because people don't want to eat the bugs or you know whatever miracle estro estrogen burgers they want to give you, right? They don't want to do it. To the point where uh, Bill Gates' company on this, I mean, if you look at the, the stocks, they're just collapsing. This is a, really just a big financing program that's going to be probably pouring money into, into what they're doing. But going into this, they have two problems. One is the definition of meat. The other is health regulations on bugs because... You know, if, if a health if, if a health regulator walks into a restaurant and there's bugs all over the food, they're going to take down that F, that A rating and give you an F, and maybe even shut down your business. You can't have bugs in your food. You know, you, that, that'll get you that'll get you like a New York City F on your door if you got bugs in your food. And so they're having problems of, well, what if the bugs are the food? Right? Yeah, there's bugs in the food, but. That, that's the purpose, right? That, that's what they're saying. And so they're having problems with health regulations and the definitions. They're trying to alter these in order to make it so that they can feed you bugs and feed you plant proteins and try to convince you you're eating meat. That, that's where things are at. 
Now, the Netherlands actually had a report kind of talking about some of this battle around definitions and also what, you know, basically the problems they're having with it. But it also ties into what this non-livestock-based protein is that the military right now is talking about rolling out. So the Netherlands says this. This is a report. This is, the commi this is commissioned by the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. The Netherlands where they have all these uh, World Economic Forum food programs going on right now. And also Insect, which is the World Economic Forum bug factory, uh, which, we, which we talked about in a previous episode. It says this. In a Loyola University Chicago Journal article, Steph Tall, a uh, tie of the University of Wisconsin Law School, argues that the battle between livestock-based proteins and emerging protein alternatives is playing out in labeling laws. How do you define it, in other words? For instance, in 2018, the Missouri legislature passed a bill known as the Missouri Meat Advertising Law. The Missouri Department of Agriculture issued a public statement describing the state as the first state to take steps to prevent misrepresentation of products as meat that are not derived from livestock or poultry to prevent mis and, and again because because again they're feeding you, they want to feed you the bugs and tell you you're eating meat they want to feed you the plant proteins of the soy burgers and tell you you're eating meat when you are not eating meat by what we would normally think of as meat. And they're fighting over this. Now it says to prevent misrepresentation or mis yeah, misrepresentation, livestock, uh, non-livestock derived products must include a prominent statement on the front of the package immediately before or immediately after the product name that the product is plant-based, veggie, lab-grown, lab-created, or a comparable qualifier because they're also talking about lab grown meats there's some weird stuff they want to take like your enzymes and you can create meat based on your own enzymes like cannibalize cannibalism basically lab grown human meat they're also talking about this weird stuff for example moreover it's saying quote products must include a prominent statement on the package that the product is, quote, made from plants, lab-grown, or a comparable disclosure. It says this, As for the insect-based protein, in the United States, edible insects fall under current legislation, since they fit the definition of food as described by U.S. Code, Title 21, Subchapter 2, Definitions. This means that they must be wholesome, Label, labeled appropriately to, dis, to declare origin, species, and allergen content toxin-free and produced under sanitary conditions. There is, however, no specific regulation. And I, I was digging a bit more into what the mil military is talking about with, again, non-livestock-based proteins or even plant-based protein options. The important part is this. The, when they say plant-based protein options, messing with the language, plant-based protein option just means non -li it means a lot of things, but it also includes non livestock based proteins, which under many forms of use, because I was researching a lot of reports, does include bugs. And so they're, they're hiding the bug meat thing under the guise of plant-based protein options. Another weird playing with words you're finding to basically sell you something that you don't know you're buying just like the just like they did with the vaccines they're changing the definition of the words rather than changing the actual thing and by changing the definition of the words on the book you and I continue using the same language if i say plant i mean a thing that grows out of the ground like you know that has leaves and so on i don't mean a bug on the plant right if I say immunity, if I say vaccine, I mean you shoot, you get something shot into your body that gives you immunity, not something that you just shoot into your body for the heck of it and doesn't give you immunity, as they're calling it. Rather than change the thing and fix the thing, they're changing the language to mislead us into believing it is something it is not. That then that's the weird regulatory loophole they're using for a lot of these different things. Uh, even the definition of racism, for example, they did the same thing. It's no longer about 
discrimination based on race or national origin. They actually removed that from the Webster Dictionary definition. Um, and I encourage you all to go look up the current Webster di Dictionary definition of racism and then look up what it used to be five years ago. You can, you can look at archives for it or you can just get an old copy if you have a Webster Dictionary laying around. They changed the definition just as one more example of this. Whereas it used to be discrimination based on race or national, national origin to any kind of social or economic system that leads to unequal outcomes based on race. They've redefined racism to be anything that is not communism, anything that doesn't apply to this equitable outcome as they, as they want to have it, not equality, but equality of outcome. And they're defining the entire you know, capitalist Western system as basically being racist by altering the definition of racism. And so when they, this is important because when they create government regulations on hate speech or racism, what they're really doing is creating government regulations on socialism under the guise of the label of racism. Again, using the same method I'm showing you over and over again that they're doing on many different things. You and I communicating with each other believe we're talking about one thing. The public discourse believes it's talking about one thing, but in reality, they changed the definitions so that what they're really talking about is something completely different. And that's how they're doing a lot of these really wild things.